So what actually means that MemGraph is integrated with NetworkX? This means that you can use a large set of NetworkX algorithms inside MemGraph, such as all shortest paths, clustering, DFS tree, between a centrality, and so on. You can also utilize NetworkX library to create custom procedures inside query modules. I showed you how to create a query module, and this means that you can just import NetworkX library and work with it, with it inside the procedure like you're used to. That's how actually graph analyzer and weakly connected components algorithms from the mage library were created. Another thing that MemGraph team created for seamless integration is a set of transformations inside GQL Alchemy. These transformations allow you to transform NetworkX graph object into MemGraph from your Python code. After the data is stored inside MemGraph, you can explore it with MemGraph Lab or run MemGraph graph algorithms. So, as I said, you can avoid all the boilerplate code because you can do it all with MemGraph. MemGraph lets you do all, all of the annoying data imports from multiple static or real-time data sources. So you can connect to, to a stream of data, create a certain query modules which you, which you use to explore this streaming data. You can run dynamic graph algorithms which allow you to obtain the results faster from the new, newly created data. And you can also use your existing NetworkX code by writing it as a Python query module inside MemGraph Lab. You can visualize and analyze the data quickly with MemGraph Lab, and I'm going to show you how you can play with graph, how you can style it to obtain the best possible results. And that's not it, because you can also deploy your application easily, since you have to only maintain one service, and that is MemGraph. So, enough talking, uh, I'm going to head over to the demo, I'm going to open up MemGraph Lab again and show you how you can use your NetworkX code with MemGraph. So we are back to our Jupyter Notebook and I'm going to show you how to import NetworkX graph into MemGraph with GQL Alchemy transformations and I'm going to show you how to uh, use best of the both worlds, both best of the NetworkX and uh, MemGraph and how to visualize your graphs easily. So what's actually inside GQL Alchemy? I mentioned transformations. So GQL Alchemy holds in transformations that allow the NetworkX graph to be transformed into the MemGraph graph. And these transformations take the network X graph object and translate it to the appropriate cipher queries. Then the cipher queries can be executed so that the graph is created inside MemGraph. As you can see here, we imported this transformation and we connected to MemGraph. We dropped the database ju just to make it all clean. We created a network X graph. We added nodes to it and edges with these methods. And we just run for query in NX to cipher transformation. We transform this graph into queries and we execute these queries. So once I do that, I can head over to the MemGraph lab. I can see that there are three nodes and two relationships. And if I run this query, I can see that this graph is actually stored inside MemGraph. So what's actually inside? We have NX to Cypher and NX graph to MemGraph parallel procedures. And we use the first one. So by default, the do node does not have a label and the edge is of type two. That's why when we had this graph, we uh, only have one node that is labeled with first and the other ones don't have a label. And we have one edge that is of type edge type and the other ones don't have a type. If we see it here, we see that this is the exact thing that happened. The number with which the node is defined in network X node translates to property ID in the MemGraph node. So if additional properties are defined in a dictionary of a node, then they will be translated to node properties in MemGraph. We just have to be careful because if we give properties that have keywords, labels, and name and type, they are going to, they are reserved for the label of a graph and type of an edge. So you just have to be careful with that if you like to add some new properties. So here we can see MemGraph Lab that actually uh, the number is really translated to the ID property. So if we want to add new properties, then uh, we just add them as a, as a new dictionary. And we can see here that we added a new um, property of name to the, uh, to the node of ID2. And we added a pro new property date to the edge of type edge type. So if we run this and we fire up here, uh, we can see that a thing changed a bit. So this one uh, has name and this edge type actually has a property called date. 
Okay, so uh, that's kind of basic stuff if you want to translate your existing graph into memgraph. Uh, but usually you are going to use memgraph as your data import tool since it's much easier to for memgraph to handle handle different data sources that are either static or uh, real time um, and you don't have to worry about that and you you don't have to have a bunch of boilerplate code uh, just for uh, importing the data set so let me now show you how you can uh, analyze and style the graph and what's else out there in uh, memgraph regarding network x integration so first let's create a new graph and this graph is the karate club graph that we talked about in the first part of the course so i'm using network x gen graph generator to create this graph and i'm just translating this into cipher queries for memgraph and creating a graph so if I head over to the memgraph lab, I can see that we have 34 nodes, 78 relationships. I run this and I can see that everything is inside. So uh, what, uh, what actually is also here, um, so um, we are aware of the importance of graph algorithms and we decided to write the wrapper objects for memgraph's graph with better usage of network X algorithms. So to make m things more convenient, we implemented procedures that call network X functions with memgraph graphs so that you have out of the box access to the graph algorithms. Uh, the network X algorithms are stored in the NX query module and there you can find many implemented procedures. So to show you, uh, when you are in memgraph lab, head over to the query modules. And if you type in NX alg, you're going to see that you have 78 procedures here. You can see which procedure those are. If there is something missing, you can always open a PR and do it, or you can use custom query module. Or you can maybe check out whether a memgraph has those procedures outside the network X query module. So besides that, we implemented our, some of our own query modules, some of our own procedures that utilize Network X library. So uh, two of them are graph analyzer and weekly connected components. So if you go here to query modules and I go to uh, weekly connected components, I can see that there is one procedure called get. Uh, and if I head over to the graph analyzer, I see there are three procedures, analyze, analyze, subgraph, and help. So I can show you actually how this procedure works. So if I call this one, I'm going to see all about my graph. So this is kind of, we collected a bunch of uh, simple procedures from the network X library, put it into one query module, and then you get all of these results with just one uh, command and this is something that is pretty useful when you start working with your graph so that you know how it looks like and what kind of uh, algorithms you can run. We also work really hard on our own graph algorithms library called Mage, which out outperforms Network X algorithms and it also has dynamic implementations as well as static ones. So uh, to show you, uh, these are all our uh, own procedures from the um, Mage. Uh, library and if you can type in page rank we also have page rank uh, as well as network x uh, but uh, this ca has a um, different uh, implementation uh, it is implemented in c plus plus and therefore it's much faster and we also have an online version that is the dynamic version which allows you to uh, obtain results fast uh, as soon as the uh, new data is coming into the database and this makes sense to use if you have uh, graph use case uh, where time is of essence, such as credit card fraud detection or similar to that. Uh, so next I'm going to show you how to analyze this graph and how to style it. And I'm going to use a combination of network X and memgraph uh, algorithms uh, to show you how you can use the best of the bo both worlds. So I have prepared a couple of queries. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to um, set up, uh, I'm going to um, run a page rank algorithm and community detection algorithm. And I'm going to set a uh, rank and community properties to each node. And once I have that, I can easily style the graph based on those values. So I prepared a query collection here 
uh, called Karate Club. And in this query collection, I can run pre-prepared queries. Uh, and uh, here I prepared, as you can see, uh, community detection here and page rank by network X. So first let's run page rank by network X and set this rank. So this is done. Uh, I have no results since I just set the values. And I want to run community detection by memgraph and set the community ID. So once this is done, I will uh, return all the graph. So let me go to the latest queries. I have this, I will run this. Okay, so, so this graph doesn't tell us anything now. So actually each of these nodes holds a rank and community values which we set before, but it does, this visualization is nothing helpful for now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to style it a bit. So let's, let's return to the Jupyter Notebook. And here I have a style file. Uh, and I prepare this file so that um, each node uh, has different size uh, proportional to the rank values. And also um, with uh, query, with this query, I determined how many communities, distinct communities are out there. So if I run this, I have four communities that are detected. So I uh, just, I didn't want to worry about, uh, since I know that there is only four community, I just did this like this. It can be done in a more elegant way, but this is totally fine for our use case. And I have four four simple colors and that's it. So if I head over to the memgraph lab, if I again run the query to show the whole graph, go to style, graph style editor, select all and paste my code. So this is like the whole code that I had and I apply it. I can also save it for later use, of course. I get this graph. So this graph is now telling us a bit bigger story. So I can see here that this node is must be an important node. Uh, this is some kind of member of community club. Um, it has it belongs to the community number two. It has this huge rank. Uh, as you can see, this node is not that large, so this rank is uh, much smaller. Um, but you can also see these colors. So as I said. Said this uh, this node belongs to the community too, but I, now I know that also this node belongs to the community too. I can obviously see four communities here, and I can easily explore, drag uh, this uh, graph. Memgraph also has a bunch of pre-prepared data sets, so you can play with them. And one of them is Karate Club Friendship Network. So if you load the data set, you're going to get, again, the same 34 nodes and 78 edges that you can play with. And I just wanted to show you how you can utilize the Network X library inside a custom query module. Uh, so what I did, I created a communities query module and uh, I can show you the code. So it's a simple query module, but it's showing how you can import your Network X code inside uh, your project with Memgraph. So you can just import Network X library. It's all here. You can import Network X algorithms and use them. So if there, there is no similar algorithm implemented inside Memgraph library or inside NX alg uh, query module in Memgraph, you can then do it here. So here I decided to use used a uh, Gerben Newman uh, community algorithm and I did it like this. So I created a read procedure and I just created a network X graph from the context. So from the current graph inside the database and this one is directed graph. So I created an object called memgraph dgraph. From that, I created a network X D graph and then I just ran Gerben Newman algorithm and I returned uh, the list of the communities that is I'm going to get uh, uh, for each community. I'm going to get a list of the um, per members that are belonging to that community. So uh, if I go to my query collections, I pre prepared uh, the um, uh, query for this. So if I close this, I can see that it looks something like that. But what I have here is this query and I'm going to run it. So it calls my uh, procedure called detect. It yields all the communities. And as I can see here, I have two communities, one of which has 15 items and one of which has 19 items. So all of the 34 nodes are inside. And if I open up this list, I can see which uh, members of the Karate Club uh, uh, 
are inside this community. And if I open this one, I can see which ones are here. So that was an easy way of how to use uh, Network X library, uh, your usual Python code inside MemGraph and just run it with Cypher, just like a simple procedure. So it's nothing complicated. And that way uh, you can stay safe with your own code, with your own Network X project. You can share it with others easily because they can also just pin up MemGraph as a Docker image and uh, play with it. Also, if you decide, uh, if you have a project uh, that needs to be production ready application, uh, you need to deploy it, you need to maintain it, and it's much easier to maintain uh, just one uh, product that is MemGraph that makes sure that all of your uh, data is imported correctly and that you can can collect data from different data sources, whether static or the real one, the real time ones. Uh, so um, yeah, it's uh, quite easier to manage that kind of project. And also, as you saw with MemGraph Lab, you get a quick visualizations with its visualization tool called Orb. Uh, so you have nothing to worry about, and you can easily explore the data and, of course, present it to others. You also saw that you can save your favorite query mo queries inside the query collection. You can visualize uh, your graph schema here um, and you can play with the sample data sets. I didn't show you a bunch of other features that MemGraph has, but there are other courses and other materi materials out there uh, with which you can learn more about that. Uh, so uh, if you get stuck with anything or have any questions, feel free to join our Discord server. There you'll get to ask anything you want to know uh, about graph analytics, memgraph, Python, and so on. Also, if you want to check all the other useful resources we have for the Network X and Python developers, head over to our memgraph for Network X developers page. Also, uh, don't forget to sign up for all the other MemGraphs courses and webinars where you get to learn a bunch of new stuff about the graph technology in general and uh, figure out what are the graph use cases and so on.